General. Conclusion A government, its officials, its officers, and its clerks, will not be bonded. 1. If it does not eliminate its own internal malfeasance with the same diligence that it pursues civilian felons. In other words, a government shall clean its own nest thoroughly. 2. If it rules by force without reason and or without the consent of the people which it governs. In such a case it shall be deemed a criminal government and its officials, officers, and clerks shall be deemed criminally malfeasant. 3. If it behaves with malice or with deliberate contempt contempt or rudeness towards its citizens. Let us contemplate our forefathers and posterity and resolve to maintain the rights bequeathed to us from the former, for the sake of the latter. The necessity of the times, more than ever, calls for our outmost circumspection, deliberation, fortitude and perseverance. Let us remember that if we suffer tamely a lawless attack upon our liberty, we encourage it, and involves others in our doom. It is a very serious consideration, that millions yet unborn may be the miserable shares of the event. Samuel Adams, Speech, 1771 The Uniform Bonding Code, UBC, Version 2.0, December 2006, 943 1.0 Legislative input Input definitions and principles Words called terms are used to construct the ships of state called statutes. When the terms are not properly defined, the statutes become like ships without rudders. They move easily in any direction and do all manner of damage on the rivers of life. Terms without definitions are the daggers of law The input definitions and principles of legislation will be bonded only if the bonding company finds that 1. All common terms in the stated principles are used according to their common dictionary definition 2. All special terms in the state's principles are exhaustively a. listed and b. defined using common terms 3. The principles are universally accepted as true, also called axioms of law or maxims of law a simple example of an axiom or maxim of law would be, definition, hire equals a wage or reward for work. Axiom maxim, a workman is worthy of his hire. The Uniform Bonding Code, UBC, version 2.0, December 2006, 1043. 1.1 Bonding and Definitions General Concepts Commercial Considerations, Definitions, principles, axioms, maxims, the bondability of a statute. Legislative branch, the bondability of the process created and used to enforce a statute, judicative branch, and the bondability of the act of enforcement and of the enforcement officer, executive branch, all rest primarily and absolutely upon the ability to write a binding contract in very definite terms between the bonding company and the bonded party or parties. No bonding company will enter into a bonding agreement unless the definitive terms of the bonding contract are laid out to the precision that is likely to be tested by public claims against the bond. The legislative bond, a statute, in order to be bondable, must satisfactorily define the terms and concepts used or involved in the construction of the statute. A statute shall not be bonded if the terms and concepts of the subject matter of the statute are not both exhaustively listed and clearly defined. Definitions, ordinary, malfeasance, unlawful or wrongful act. Wrongdoing in general. Malpractice, improper or illegal treatment, med. Improper or immoral conduct. Crime, dash, a, an act that subjects the door to legal punishment. Dash, b the commission or omission of an act specifically forbidden or enjoined by public law. Dash, C, any grave offence against morality or social order. Criminal, penal law versus criminal law. Implying crime or heinous wickedness. The Uniform Bonding Code, UBC, version 2.0, December 2006, 1143. Civil citizen rather than ecclesiastical or military. Civil law, legal relations between citizens or between citizen and state legal rights. Slander, 
Oral malicious falsehood. Libel, written slander. 1.2 Bonding and Principles Maxims Statutes are the motor vehicles of government. They are used to collect revenue, to collect power and to provide public service. Properly constructed statutes serve the public properly, poorly constructed statutes poorly, or destructively. A defective statute is easily misused. The easy misuse of a statute is an invitation to a rampant misuse of the statute. If a statute can be misused to get money or power, its misuse is likely. If a statute can easily be misused to get money or power, its misuse is virtually certain. Defective statutes invite the deliberate misuse of the statutes. Deliberate misuse, misapplication, of a statute is a criminal act. The lack of job insurance bonding makes people personally more cautious, causing a decrease in accidents, negligence, malfeasance, and crime. The cost of bonding premiums discourages negligence. The bonding of negligence encourages the commission of negligence on the part of the people who do not pay the premium. A bonding company shall not bond negligence. No statutes are bonded against deliberate misuse, i.e., criminal use. If malfeasance, criminal malpractice, were to be bonded, that bonding would encourage malfeasance. Malfeasance if unchecked will multiply. The Uniform Bonding Code, UBC, version 2.0, December 2006, 1243. Therefore, a bonding company shall not bond malfeasance or criminal malpractice. Criminal acts include acts committed in violation of a citizen's constitutional rights and in violation of guarantees of equal protection of the law, civil rights. Statutes which encourage criminal acts in order to enforce the statutes are not bondable statutes. The bonding of criminal acts would encourage the commission of criminal acts, hence criminal acts, crimes, cannot be bonded. Bonding companies are not required to bond what they do not want to bond. A bonding company only pays claims for damages against a bond which it sells issues. A bonding company must pay a claim on a bond which it has sold if the condition of the bond claim is satisfied. A bonding company will not bond a defective statute because it does not want to pay the claim on the misuse of the statute. Bonding a defective statute is an invitation to bankruptcy. 2.0 Legislative Control The control logic of legislation will be bonded only if the bonding company finds to its satisfaction that 1. The definitions of the terms used in the logic are bonded. 2. The principles used in the logic are bonded. 3. The logic being used to design the statute tests, and the conclusions obtained represent all of the possible combinations of principles and applications, situations, for which the specific statute is being designed, and 4. None of the conclusions derived from the cited tested combination of principles and applications contradicts any condition or condition known to be wholesome to the civilization. 5. If a conclusion logically derived from the cited tested combination of principles and applications contradicts any condition known to be wholesome to civilization, then the reason for the contradiction has been pursued relentlessly until the cause of the contradiction has been understood perfectly, lest the definition, the principles, the logic or the understanding of the application be faulty. The Uniform Bonding Code, UBC, version 2.0, December 2006, 1343. 6. A complete record has been kept of the definitions, principles, and logic underlying the design of the statute and that record is publicly available. 2.1. Bonding public education. Re. Right versus wrong. It is said that ignorance of the law is no excuse for wrong action, that all persons are presumed to know the difference between right and wrong, hence know the law. If that is true, 1. There would be no reason for public education and the practice of law. 2. Then there would be no reason to have law schools. 3. 
then there would be no reason why citizens could not practice law without a license. 4. Then there would be no reason why a citizen should not or could not sit beside a friend in court and counsel him or her. Thomas Jefferson put it well when he said, I know no safe depository of the ultimate powers of the society but the people themselves, and if we think them not enlightened enough to exercise their control with a wholesome discretion, the remedy is not to take it from them, but to inform their discretion. Thomas Jefferson's Letter, September 28, 1820. Source. What he said was that the common public should be able to practice law without a license and to be able to do so, they should be given a public education in law. The public and the bonding companies would both benefit from such a situation. It would eliminate the professional law conspiracy which preserves the malfeasance of public officials, injures the public, and precipitates most of the claims against bonding companies. Therefore, Bonding companies shall engage the policy that they shall not bond, ensure, public schools which do not teach their student body law and the practice of law, and specifically shall not bond public schools which do not teach. 1. The Declaration of Independence. 2. The United States Constitution. 3. The Method of Writing an Event Log for a Court Case. 4. The Method of Compiling a Document Log. The Uniform Bonding Code, UBC, version 2.0, December 2006, 1443. 5. The method of compiling a document analysis log. 6. The method of analyzing legal briefs, civil complaints, and criminal charges. 7. The method of writing affidavits. 8. The method of writing and filing U.S. criminal complaints. 9. The method of writing a quality contract. 10. The method of composing expository information for distribution on the street. 11. The method of distressing and leaning property, and 12. Several other processes valuable to citizens for securing their rights against and overthrowing the malfeasance of public officials. A public official, clerk or servant shall lose his bond. 1. If he interferes with the education of the public in matters of law and the practice of law. 2. If he refuses to give to a citizen legal advice about a process with which he is familiar or if he refuses to give to a citizen legal advice which he is qualified to give because of his familiarity with and pertaining to the normal course of his public service. But no public servant or citizen shall be held legally liable for any information which he shall give when it is given upon demand pursuant to a citizen's written or spoken writ of mandamus, an order to come to one's aid, pursuant to 42 U.S.C. 1986, the Brothers Keeper Statute of the United States. 3. If he injures or oppresses any citizen who is acting in good faith and good behavior with a genuine and honest intent to practice law and or to give legal counsel or assistance to other. 4. If he tries to get a citizen prosecuted for practice of law without a license where there is no clear evidence of false advertising, fraud or injury to the party being counseled. 5. If he tries to get a citizen prosecuted for practice of law without a license in order to eliminate competition in a litigation, a legal process or the legal industry generally. 6. If he operates a court of the legal system as a facility of a legal labor union. Bar Association, reserved for state licensed attorneys only, that is, as a closed union shop. The Uniform Bonding Code, UBC, version 2.0, December 2006, 1543. 2.2 Bonding Taxation Statutes. Just Compensation versus Fraudulent Taxation. A government public trust is supposed to operate on taxes and if a government operates commercial enterprises using tax money in competition with a free enterprise public, then the money of the citizens is being used in competition with the citizens, and that will discourage the payment and collection of taxes. It will cause tax rebellion. Conflict of interest, therefore, all revenue raised by a government's offices of public trust must be obtained by the performance of public service not provided by ordinary free enterprise businesses. Public service is the only sort of business in which a government is supposed to be employed.
nor shall private property, taxes, be taken for public use without lust compensation, valuable, publicly needed and publicly wanted service rendered by government. The 16th so-called amendment of the US Constitution does not base the assessment of taxes on services rendered by the government for the public but rather upon the services rendered by public citizens for third parties, hence, the 16th so-called amendment of the US Constitution violates the 5th, so-called, amendment of the US Constitution. Essentially, the only lawful personal tax assessable for operating a government is a per capita tax determined by dividing the cost of operating the government by the number of emancipated citizens, or persons of majority age 18 years old or older. A U.S. constitutional fifth, so-called, amendment system of taxation based on just compensation requires a per capita tax. Read, Uniform. A legislator will not be bonded if he legislates or attempts to legislate a law to create a source of revenue without providing an equally valuable public service which the public needs and wants. Just compensation. In the US Constitutional 16th, so-called, amendment deduction system of taxation there are three economic industries. 1. Capital. 2. Goods and services. 3. Labor. Each has a 100%, 100%, deductibility of overhead. Therefore, the common man who works to support his family can deduct all of his household expenses for his part of providing the labor force of the nation. There would be nothing left to tax. Originally, the US 16th, so-called, amendment applied only to corporate income. Since its beginning, its wording, Taxation on income from whatever source derived has been applied by the IRS. The U Uniform Bonding Code, UBC, version 2.0, December 2006, 1643. 1. To the common laboring household although it is 100% deductible. 2. To gifts and inheritance to which the government has contributed no valuable service which funds are, therefore, being taxed twice. 3. To collecting taxes on crime, namely, bank robbery, organized crime and hard drug sales, 25% excise tax, making the government a beneficiary of, hence favorable toward, the commission of paying crime. Furthermore, the social security system of the IRS operates a fraudulent insurance bonding scheme in competition with honest free enterprise insurance bonding companies, as follows. If a husband and wife both pay into the social security insurance system out of their common social and commercial conjugal relationship, and if one dies, the other gets the payment of the social security benefit on only one person. This is a mutual financial sacrifice of two people joined as one social commercial unit, paid back only partially to the surviving person. That is blatant insurance fraud on the part of the social security insurance system and the social security system finances so many social service programs which it was never intended for, that it is in constant financial trouble. A sales tax is no better. Federal law, Title 42 of the U.S. Code, includes an anti-peonage law which declares that no natural person, citizen, can be compelled to work for free, not even to collect taxes or do bookkeeping for the IRS or the state sales tax commissions. Even if the government agrees to pay for the collection of the taxes, the law allows that a citizen can refuse to work for any specific person or organization. Also, many persons do not believe it to be patriotic to pay taxes to the IRS. The IRS appears as a Rothschild enterprise, not a part of the US. Government, and there has been a movement in government to brand as right-wing antisemites, those patriots who point out the fact that the IRS, the Federal Reserve, and the FDIC are all well-known financial enterprises of the Jewish Rothschild family of Europe. In fact, much of the tax protest movement, and much of the civil rights violations heaped on citizens by the legal establishment because of tax rebellion, arise out of the now common knowledge that the national debt has been created by a sequence of wars financed on both sides by the Rothschild family to force the US to borrow money from Rothschild banks creating an attachment of all U.S. property as collateral to pay off Rothschild war loans. The vociferates of antisemitism are not coming. 
from common Jews, but from the Rothschild banking system which detests. Having the burglar's mask ripped off its face, and which uses antisemitism as a decoy. The reader is noticed to study and discover the differences and variations of and between Jewish, Jewish, Zionist, etc. The Uniform Bonding Code, UBC, version 2.0, December 2006, 1743. It should be clear that it is pure financial insanity to bond any statutes, processes, or enforcements connected with any form of tax collection other than those based upon a per capita tax. 2.3 Bonding Exigency Statute Statutory Fraud, Emotional Urgent Necessity Statutes, a legislator is said to be engaging in the confidence game of statutory fraud when he by the legislation of statutes creates a false problem for, or artificial or fraudulent need in, any citizen or group of citizens in order, 1, to justify the creation of the capacity to offer a solution for the false problem created, or 2, to justify the collection of taxes or revenue to finance the solution of the problem created. A fraudulent need or want is a need or want which, 1, has not been solicited by the public, or 2, has been pawned off on the public a, by coercive suggestion b, by lack of representation, or c, by misrepresentation of its consequences i, for the good of the many at the expense of individual liberty or property, or 2, for the good of anyone at the expense of the freedom of many, lottery, and 3, which is not a valuable service to the public generally. A legislator is said to be engaging in statutory fraud when he creates a false source or apparent source of supply, a false solution, for any citizen or group of citizens in order 1. To create, for the government, the capacity to create problems for the public, or 2. To create, for the government, a source of revenue, example, the lottery. The Uniform Bonding Code, UBC, version 2.0, December 2006, 1843. Bonding versus Lottery. Responsible Wagering versus Non-Responsible Wagering. Taxation without Representation. Example of the creation of a fraudulent need or want or an apparent source of supply is the operation of a state lottery. Such a system is solicited by the public, because a large portion of the public likes to, hence wants to, gamble. However, the consequences of a state lottery are not honestly represented to the public by the state, and the lottery does not render a valuable service for the public. Money from the lottery gives state high officials a sense of independence which makes them feel that they can do without bonding and can risk malfeasance because they have adequate funds with which to manipulate inferior officers, clerks and the public. Although bonding is wagering you might call it insurance set free from the behavioral restrictions of bonding by its monetary wealth, the state will degenerate to an organized crime syndicate and resort to the seizure of substance, real estate, etc and the means of the conveyance of substance, waterways, etc., by condemnation, eminent domain, and by issuing letters of mark and reprisal, orders to march and seize, to mercenary law enforcement officers UN troops. Legislators, who legislate a potentially publicly hazardous statute, must themselves be bonded against the possibility of being sued for any misuse of that statute which could arise as a consequence of the defective construction of the statute. A legislator will not be bonded if he legislates or attempts to legislate a law to create a source of revenue without providing an equally valuable public service which the public needs and wants, just compensation. A solution in need of problems, environmentalism governments create causes and problems in order to justify taxation and political domination. They always need a credible enemy to create the urgent necessity to ask for more money and to make more laws for the good of the public and in the interest of national security. To obtain the consent of the public, governments create problems, or scenarios of problems, so that they will be able to offer solutions which an ignorant and somewhat gullible and self-serving public will buy. The classic political example is the now publicly known strategy by which President F. D. Roosevelt and Winston Churchill maneuvered the Japanese into. The Uniform Bonding Code, UBC, 
Version 2.0, December 2006, 1943. Attacking the U.S. fleet at Pearl Harbor, December 7, 1941. Footnote, Theobald, Rear Admiral Robert A., The Final Secret of Pearl Harbor, Publisher, Date. And Barnes, Harry Elmer, Pearl Harbor After a Quarter of a Century, Publisher, Date. Although there are many very real environmental problems, environmentalism as a political lever is the latest trick to obtain the consent of the public. It is legally known as the New World Order it is economically known as globalism. Environmental statutes must be closely examined for exigency fraud. Footnote, H. Wayne, Storm Over Rangelands, P.O. Box 1085, Tonopah, Nevada 89049, $15. Some of the exigency statutes of present-day governments are designed by banking and military war games computers. The economic war games computers are the new guns of governments, firing statutes, and economic and social situations as bullets. Footnote, Lewin, Leonard C., a report from Iron Mountain, Pub. Date? And Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars, America's Promise Newsletter, P. Dotto, Box 30,000, Phoenix, Arizona 85046. 2.4 Bonding Insurance Statutes Compulsory Insurance The bonding of statutes which require natural persons, non-incorporated persons, to purchase insurance, must be very carefully analyzed, and be regarded with the utmost caution. As a general rule, it is against the law for any entity to compel any citizen to pay any wager or premium for the privilege of not being injured or for the privilege of not being threatened with injury, protection insurance racketeering. Footnote, US ICO laws. Corporations may be required by the state in which they are incorporated, to purchase public hazard insurance because the corporation, being an artificial paper person, a legal fiction, is regarded as having no conscience other than the state, making the state as a silent partner of the corporation, financially responsible for the acts of the corporation. That which the liege lord giveth, the liege lord taketh away. When the benefit which the state gives to the corporation is limited liability, which is a limited commercial responsibility to the commercial public, to a reasonable extent, then the state must protect the commercial public to a reasonable extent from a potential lack of commercial responsibility of the corporation or from a tendency toward a potential lack of commercial responsibility of the corporation, by requiring the corporation to purchase hazard bonding. This requirement protects the public from some losses, and protects the state from some civil liability, by a showing of commercial good faith action. The Uniform Bonding Code, UBC, version 2.0, December 2006, 2043. Compulsory Motor Vehicle Insurance. Citizens are required to surrender the ultimate title of ownership of their motor vehicles, the manufacturer's statement of origin MSO, to their respective states in exchange for a certificate of title of ownership and license plates. The state owns the vehicle because it holds the ultimate title to the motor vehicle. The citizen has the permission to use the vehicle. The permission can be revoked at any time by the state. Tennessee Department of Revenue Operations Supervisor, Denise Rotero, before Judge Greer. She explained Tennessee's auto registration process. The vehicle can be seized and auctioned off to provide revenue for the state. For example, the state of Oregon seizes and auctions citizens' motor vehicles as a penalty for soliciting a prostitute, proving that the auto belongs to the state. Because the state has the ultimate ownership of all of the vehicles used by all of its citizens, the state also has the ultimate liability for all accidents in which those vehicles become involved. This is a potential reason for the state to compel citizens to purchase motor vehicle insurance. Another reason is obvious. The state is a silent partner in every insurance corporation incorporated in that state and so, many of the insurance companies within the state are mere alter egos or second selves of the state. 
In this insurance scheme the state makes it mandatory for the citizen to buy a product which the state is selling. The individual state will get part of the insurance business, the interstate insurance companies, regulated by the United States Securities and Exchange Commission, will get the remainder of the insurance business. Also, states need civil malpractice insurance. This sort of insurance comes from above, from interstate insurance companies and international maritime insurance companies such as Rothschild, so, some states prostitute their legislative power as an inducement to get insurance companies to give them a better payment rate for their own malpractice insurance coverage premiums for their own corporate activities, by compelling citizens to purchase motor vehicle insurance. In any compulsory motor vehicle insurance scheme, a citizen's purchase of motor vehicle insurance is guaranteed by a threat of injury in the form of a suspension of the driver's license, seizure of the vehicle, fines, and imprisonment if the citizen does not comply with the state's mandate. This creates the basic fabric of a protection insurance racket, hence a very real credibility problem for insurance and bonding companies. The bonding problem gets really nasty when a judge compels a citizen to either buy auto insurance or to quite driving his, the citizen's, car. Because a bond. The Uniform Bonding Code, UBC, version 2.0, December 2006, 2143. Or insurance is only a promise to pay and not a tangible product, a citizen can lawfully and rightfully argue that, like a savings and loan or a bank, an insurance bonding bonding company might not be around when damage is done and it is time for a claim payoff. Therefore the citizen can lawfully guarantee the auto insurance policy by putting a common law lien on enough of the property of the law enforcement officer and the judge to cover the face value of the insurance policy. This commercial lien cannot be removed. A federal RICO action against the enforcement officer and the judge can also compel them to pay all of the premiums for all of the persons whom they have compelled to buy insurance. The voluntary purchasing of motor vehicle insurance is smart. It is a good investment. But compulsory purchase of any sort of insurance in order to continue the daily act of living is protection insurance racketeering. Any bonding company which bonds compulsory motor vehicle insurance statutes is going to have big irresolvable problems, and any officer or judge who enforces compulsory motor vehicle insurance statutes is laying himself wide open to economic ruin. 3.0 Legislative Output The output conclusion of legislation will be bonded and become a valid and lawful statute thereby, only if the bonding company finds that. 1. The definitions of the terms used in the conclusion are bonded. 2. The principles used in the conclusion are bonded. 3. The logic used in the conclusion is bonded. 4. The conclusion has been presented to the public, has been negatively criticized because of its construction or effect, then, the conclusion has been returned to the analysis and logic stage to test and justify its construction and effect, and, 5. The legislated conclusion, after it has been subjected to public scrutiny and further analysis, is economically feasible for a wager on its public application. If it survives this last step, the conclusion is said to be perfected for legislative bonding, and becomes a judiciable statute, FN, a legislative conclusion becomes a valid and lawful statute only if it is legislatively bonded.